but only 90 words. Okay, this is some uh, four voice warm up. It'll be at 200 words a minute. We have Mr. Smith for the people, Ms. Shinoni for defense. Let's identify. I'm Mr. Smith for the people. I am the witness. I am the court. I am the court <coughs> for defense, Ms. Shinoni. And it's the court, 15? Yes. The court for the record. Let's call people of the state of California versus Wells, court number 1665744. Council, please state your appearance for the record. Bill Smith for the people, good afternoon. Chris Shinoni for Jesse Wells. Let the record reflect Mr. Wells is present in the courtroom with counsel. All right, call your witness, please, Mr. Smith. We will call Detective May. Please raise your right hand. Please have a seat. State your full name and spell your first and last names for the record. Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, Maine, M-A-I-N. Good afternoon. What is your occupation, sir? I am a San Francisco police officer assigned to the robbery section with the rank of detective. How long have you been a San Francisco police officer? 25 years. You were assigned the follow-up investigation of a reported robbery that occurred at a Subway sandwich shop? Yes. At 423 Bush Street on May 29th of last year? Yes, I was assigned to that. Who was the victim in that case? John Rickert. R-I-C-K-E-R-T. That is right. Did you personally meet with Mr. Rickert? I did. Did the record reflect the witness has some papers in front of him that appear to have writing on them? I will object that the witness is reading from them. Let me clear this thing up once and for all. Detective, as you know, when you testify here in court, you testify from the best of your recollection. If you need to refresh your recollection at any time, you may use any written documents to refresh your recollection. So ordinarily, you would read the document, and then you would be asked if your recollection was refreshed. And you will answer, I assume, in the affirmative. Then you will so testify. You testify from your own recollection and not from any other records, okay? Yes, Your Honor. I have a fairly good recollection as to what happened. As to the specific small details, I sometimes would need to refresh my memory. That is fine. Of course, perfection is not required. Honor about always works. Mr. Smith, you may proceed. Thank you. Did you meet with Mr. Richter? Yes. And the meeting that you had with him, was there an occasion when he told you about the facts of the robbery? Yes. When did that meeting take place where you discussed the facts of the robbery? For that date, I would like to look at my report. You may refresh your recollection. August 19, 845 in the morning. What did Mr. Rickard tell you personally in that conversation regarding the robbery? He said on May 26th, he was working at the subway shop behind the counter. The defendant came in and pulled a long barreled revolver. He pointed it roughly at his midsection at first and hid the gun from view by holding the gun close to his own body so that it was blocked from view, blocked from view from outside of the store. He said he wanted the victim's money or he would blow his fucking brains out. He then raised the gun to his head and the defendant, I mean the defendant took $210 from him and placed it in a bag. I am going to object and move to strike. There has been no evidence the defendant did anything on that date, Your Honor. All right. I will clear that up. When you say raise the gun to his head, are you referring to the victim's head or the defendant's head? I am referring to the robbery, taking the gun and pointing it at the victim's head. Let's proceed with question and answer. Proceed. You indicated that Mr. Rickard gave the robber $210.00. After the robber demanded money, is that correct? That is correct. And you indicated that Mr. Rickard had referred to the defendant as the robber. Was there some way Mr. Rickard identified the defendant, Jesse Wells? Yes, Mr. Rickard was shown a photo lineup and selected Jesse Wells from the photos and identified him as the man who pointed the gun to his head and took his money. Is that the same Jesse Wells who is here in court? Yes. What is he wearing here today, please? He is wearing an orange sweatshirt. Thank you. The record will reflect that the witness has identified the defendant here in court. Did you personally meet with Jesse Wells after he was arrested? Yes. Do you recall when you interviewed Mr. Wells? I would have to look at my report again. Please do. On August 16, three days before I spoke with the victim, I spoke with Mr. Wells at 4.30 in the afternoon at the Hall of Justice. (laughs) And did you give Mr. Wells his Miranda warning? Yes, I did. Did he waive those rights? Yes. speak to you? He did. Did he speak to you specifically about this incident? Yes, he did. What did you tell him his involvement, if any, was in the Subway sandwich robbery? Object. Based on a violation of my Sarah and a violation of Hirschfeld, I can cite the case law if the court wishes. I could also argue why. It is lack of foundation, and I guess it would be the legal objection. 
but in the case law I'm citing, there is plenty of evidence of these violations. Well, I think that depends on whether or not Mr. Wells had an attorney at the time, and he was being represented by an attorney at that time. I think the police will have a right to interview people. To shortcut this, he was arrested on another case, but he was not yet charged or represented in this case. Is that correct, Detective? That is right. So there was an uncharged case against him that was under investigation. So we are still in the investigative stage? Right. Not the accusatory stage? Right. The objection will be overruled. You may proceed. Your Honor, if I may argue on that point, because there is case law to support that. It is not just the fact that they are in the investigatory stage of a case. It goes to whether or not there are ongoing cases with an individual that are closely related in time. At a time when a person is being represented and when a person in this particular case has been previously spoken to this detective and said he did want his lawyer present, when this detective tried to obtain statements from him about unrelated robberies on a previous occasion, August 1st to be exact. You say August 13th? The 16th. The 16th. Oh, the 16th. That is correct. I think the cross-examination will reveal that this detective saw my client August 1st and he requested his lawyer at that time. The detective went to talk to him about unrelated offenses and my client requested a lawyer. There had been on one previous attempt by another detective to gain confessions, as to which I don't know, but he also said, I want my lawyer to be present. He did have a lawyer appointed back in June. We may have... A document in court that gives the exact date when a lawyer began representing him in my office. Judge, could I pose a question in a new area? I think we will save this litigation for the Superior Court. Okay, this is more for voice warm up. We have Mr. Beauchene for the people and Mr. Hernandez for defense. Let's identify. I am Mr. Beauchene for uh, the plaintiff. I am the witness. I am the court. I am attorney for defense, Mr. Hernandez. Fourteen. Okay, this is Mr. Hernandez for the record. And those were bent and missing. The corners are bent, yes, sir. Now, aside from the candy apple red, what was the distinctive markings on the gas tank? The dent. There's a definite dent where I dropped the key on top of the gas tank, and it left a dent on the left-hand side by the gas cap. Was it a large dent? No, sir. It was very minor, a very little dent. And you dropped how heavy a key? My house key. Is it 10 inches long or just about an inch and a half long? Is it pretty heavy? The key? Yeah. It's a key, a regular house key, about an inch or two long. And that dropped on the gas tank and dented it? Yes, sir. While I was riding, the force of the wind knocked it against the top of the tank. How long prior to your observing the motorcycle on March 1st did this occur, the dropping of the key on the tank? About a month or so before. Had you attempted to paint it? No, sir. And it's not bad enough to repaint? No, sir. And it's also candy apple red, the paint on this gas tank? Yes, sir. And the rest of the bike was the same? Yes, sir. And when you saw Mr. White come out of his clothing store, he asked you what you were doing by his motorcycle? Yes, sir. Did you tell him that those parts strike that? Did you tell Mr. White that the motorcycle you were observing was yours? I told him the parts on the motorcycle were mine. What did he say? He said, no, they're not. They're mine. Did he say where he had gotten them? He said he had purchased them. After he denied that they were yours, did you continue talking with him? I believe so. Did you talk to him? Did you tell him about whether that motorcycle had been taken? I don't remember the extent of the conversation. I insisted they were mine, and he kept insisting they were his. You kept insisting that the parts were yours, and Mr. White kept denying that the parts were yours. And he then said, they're mine. I bought them. Yes, sir. What's the value of these parts? The tank cost me $300. Is it a special type of tank? No, sir. Is it a stock tank, you might call it? Yes, sir. Did you buy the gas tank separate from the rest of the bike, the rest of the motorcycle? My tank developed a leak, so I had to replace the tank. It's specially constructed, so if it develops a leak, it won't leak out because it has some material inside the tank. The tank? That will prevent leaks? Not to my knowledge. So is that the cheapest you could have bought? I'll object to that as irrelevant. I'll rephrase the question. Did you shop around for a tank? Yes, sir. Was that the average price you came across? Yes, sir. Where did you buy the gas tank? The Honda shop, Burke's Honda. 
Burke's Honda. Uh -huh. Where is that located? On Golden State here in Turlock. What's the value of the side plates? I have no idea. How big are they just in dimensions? They're approximately six to eight inches long, triangular in shape. And you have no idea what the value is? No, sir. What about the fenders, front and rear fenders? I have no idea what they sell for. And the wheel? Over $200. Did you pay $100 to get it specially made? Just to have it replaced, I paid $150, but I had my own wheel. Well, a wheel without the spokes isn't worth much, is it? It's quite expensive, yes, sir. The question is, the wheel without the spokes? The wheel without the spokes is expensive, yes, sir. Now, do you know whether Mr. White took your bike on February 28th? No, sir. Had you seen him around the neighborhood or where you had parked your bike? Had I seen him around my neighborhood? Yes, sir, I had. Where did you see him? He used to drive by. So you knew Mr. White? Yes, sir. Would he drive by on a motorcycle? Yes, sir. And was it cherry apple, candy apple red? No, sir. Two days prior to my bike being stolen, the bike was green. His bike was green. And did Mr. White say to you that he had more than one bike? No, sir. He didn't mention that he had other bikes in his home and parts that he had in his home? He mentioned something about parts, yes, sir. Did you make any offers to Mr. White regarding that you would not press charges if Mr. White would return your bike back? No, sir. You didn't tell Mr. White that you would not press charges or go forward with this case if you put your bike together? Not. After February, after March 1st? Not in those words, no, sir. What did you tell him? I told him I'd talk to the detective and see if he wanted to work out a deal. What was the deal you had in mind? I have no idea. He talked to the detective. I didn't talk to him. You told Mr. White you talked to the detectives to see if they wanted to work out a deal. Is that correct? Mr. White told me that he knew where my parts were and he would try to get them back. What's the relevance of all this? The other thing, do you want to have all this on the record? It, well, Your Honor, I just want to get it on the record. It's there. Were there any other distinctive markings on the gas tank? I believe I named them all. It was a brand new tank. There were no dents on the left side or right side? When I had the bike, no, sir. How about when you saw it on March 1st? Yes, sir. There were fresh dents on it. When you say fresh, what do you mean? The paint was chipped off? Yes, and it was also dented. Okay, this will be a uh, warm-up from our 200, and we're doing this at 210 words per minute, so 14s. We have Ms. Pearl for the people and Mr. Walden for defense. Let's identify. I am Ms. Pearl for the people. I am the witness. I am the court. I am the attorney for defense, Mr. Walton. Pearl. Begins with a question by Ms. Pearl, for the record. <clears throat> One last question. May you testify that you saw the victim at the time of your arrival and that you took a statement at the hospital. Did you get a good look at his wounds? Yes, I did. In your work, do you ever have to make diagrams of crime scenes? Yes, I do. I'm going to, I have a basic diagram that is a standard printout. I will first show it to counsel. It is of the human body. I'm going to ask that the witness mark this diagram. I'm going to ask you to go to the diagram that purports to show a human body, a male body, from the front side and the back side, and mark where the stab <coughs> wounds were that you noticed. Excuse me. Would you first mark left, right on each side, just for purposes of the record? From this person's position, this would be the left side of his body. This is a person's right side of his body. To my recollection, there was a stab wound, a puncture wound, right underneath the shoulder area or very high chest area, approximately in here, then approximately three or four inches down and slightly inward was another puncture wound. Could you mark them just a little bit larger? Where the X is across would be an approximation of the wound locations. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, officer. Where the X is would be an approximation of the wound location. I have nothing further. Okay. Thank you. Officer, did you measure the wound in any respect? No, I didn't. Did you say in your estimate how deep the wound is where you put the X? No, sir, I don't know. Was it a straight, straight cut? Could you describe it? I would describe it as a puncture, but not a cut. Okay, and you don't have any estimate of how deep it was? No, I don't. Now, with respect to your responding to the scene when you approached the victim, how was he positioned when you first saw him? The victim was on a chair or something you could sit on, a chair or a bench or something to that effect in the lobby, just off to the right of the front door. And he was being attended to by paramedics and fire department personnel? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay, and was he talking with the paramedics and fire department personnel? Not that I recall. Okay, and how close to him did you get when he spoke? Oh, approximately four feet, approximately my distance to the court reporter. Just a moment. I want the bailiff to investigate that commotion out in the hallway, and besides that, I think it's time for a break.
Okay, we're going to repeat that at 210 words per minute again. <laughs> For the record. One last question. Now you testified that you saw the victim at the time of your arrival and that you took his statement at the hospital. Did you get a good look at his wound? Yes, I did. In your work, do you ever have to make diagrams of crime scenes? Yes, I do. I'm going to, I have a basic diagram that is a standard printout. I will first show it to counsel. It is of the human body. I'm going to ask that the witness mark this diagram. I'm going to ask you to go to the diagram that purports to show a human body, a male body from the front side and the back side and mark where the stab wounds were that you noticed. Excuse me, would you first mark left, right on each side just for the purposes of the record? From this person's position, this would be the left side of his body. This is the person's right side of his body. To my recollection, there was a stab wound, a puncture wound, right underneath the shoulder area or very high chest area, approximately in here. Then approximately three or four inches down and slightly inward was another puncture wound. Could you mark them just a little bit larger? Where the X's across would be an approximation of the wound locations. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, officer. Where the X's would be an approximation of the wound location. I have nothing further. Okay. Thank you. Officer, did you measure the wound in any respect? No, I didn't. Did you say in your estimate how deep the wound is where you put the X? No, sir. I don't know. Was it a slight cut? Could you describe it? I would describe it as a puncture, but not a cut. Okay. And you don't have any estimate of how deep it was? No, I don't. Now, with respect to your responding to the scene, when you approached the victim, how was he positioned when you first saw him? The victim was on a chair or something you could sit on, a chair or a bench or something to that effect, in the lobby just off to the right of the front door. And he was being attended to by paramedics and fire department personnel? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay, and was he talking with the paramedics and fire department personnel? Not that I recall. Okay, and how close to him did you get when he spoke? Oh, approximately four feet, approximately my distance to the court reporter. Just a moment. I want the bailiff to investigate that commotion out in the hallway. And besides that, I think it's time for a break.